Oh, it's a full-on glass off out here. We're motoring obviously, you got the mainsail up. And the water's so crystal clear, you can just see straight down into it. Marie's setting up the front there, half naked. Just looking at squid and sharks swimming by and whales and we've seen everything today. Quite a bit of plastic as well to be honest, but uh, oh, incredible day so far. No sailing. Well, we had about first 40 minutes we had good sailing, but uh, yeah, it's been pretty glassy ever since. But yeah, incredible. The ocean is so nice here. first drone whale footage this year. I guess there's some sort of pilot whale. I don't know, but it was pretty freaking amazing. And the water's so clear. We just uh, saw them in the distance and then turned the engine off and just drifted slowly over with the mainsail up. And then they just came slowly towards us. So I threw the drone up in the air and like, wow, so cool. Stoked. So we're just out in the middle of the ocean here. This sail's still up, we're holding onto a rope. Because the whales we just saw before from the drone shot, we sort of got in front of them and just parked the boat and jumped in and hoped they swim past us. But we can't see them anymore, so I don't know. Water's super clear here though.
going very slowly no we're actually doing four knots but you're going downwind it feels like you're not even moving but we're just threading our way between a heap of reefs look at this on the charts a lot of reefs everywhere and uh making our way down to here to have a little stop for the end of the day been a pretty amazing day with the whales and swimming in the beautiful clean super clear water and uh yeah a bit of motoring bit of sailing bit of snacking 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 i snack yeah she did a lot of snacking she's always hungry yeah always hungry sailing show me your six pack you wouldn't know she's always hungry she's skinny as a rake but yeah sailing makes her hungry that's good so we're not far away from the anchorage now but we're completely downwind well nearly yeah 170 degrees but i thought i'd show you quickly how i do the wing on wing on chehalion so i've got the mainsail over to the windward side and then in theory i'd put a pole out on the jib but as we're only going another couple of miles it's just sort of letting it float around freestyle on the main because it's on the windward side and there's there's not really waves today but it still wants to come back over towards the middle sometimes as i don't have the traveler you've seen in other videos i have the, the dual main sheet system so what i've what i've done is just taken the main sheet from the port side and swung it around and used it as a preventer so now you can see i've got again a triangle basically of two two main sheets so i can also put downward pressure on the boom to keep the sail pretty good i mean i've got the vang tightened as well but and the boom can't swing back across it's only a matter of unclipping this this quick clip swinging the the pulley system around and clipping it onto this pad eye here that's also the uh spinnaker blocks and yeah this one works good said we were we're currently sailing along the north coast of Flores in between Malmeri and La Bombaggio Komodo we left Malmeri two days ago so we're just doing little hops there's a lot of anchorages it's about 30 35 40 miles sort of days just in between so we leave sort of 6 37 in the morning get here after lunch and then have the afternoon to relax and uh, do what we want explore a little bit and if we find a good place then we'll stay a couple of days and if not we just keep moving uh, the next stop we're expected to be quite good is Riong um, it's called the 17 islands national park apparently the diving and the wildlife is pretty good there 
so we'll probably stop there for even even a week we'll see but where we are today it's just a little village you can see behind me um, not even sure the name of this place actually but yeah it's not very clear water there's some rivers coming out this it's good anchoring right in mud here but you know uh, this afternoon we're just going to work on editing videos and we'll peace out of here in the morning but yeah great day as you saw pretty amazing like not the best sailing day but wow those whales incredible just to come across them and and be able to film them with the drone like that um, would have been great if we'd have seen them when we we're in the water but yeah you've got to wow they've basically got to come to us and that's small chance because they still hunt whales here so i guess whales sort of steer clear of humans a little bit anyway yep i hope you enjoyed that um, I'll give you a little update actually on what our plans are, long-term plans. Um, obviously, COVID is affecting everyone and everyone's plans worldwide. And we don't really know what's going on from week to week. Well, it's settled down a bit now, I guess, month to month. Most countries are sort of saying now there's not going to be much change before the end of this year, tourism-wise, travel-wise. So, some things have opened, some things have closed. But our plan had been to go up to Malaysia, haul out, you know, look around Langkawi, Phuket for, for the next season. I've sort of given up on that now, um, just because it doesn't look like e any of the countries are going to open. Um, maybe by the end of the year they will, but by then the, the north uh, monsoon has started and to get up to there will be yeah, a nightmare. So basically we would have to start heading up there October, end of October at the latest. And I don't think anything's going to change by then. So nearly given up on that. And so probably going to haul out and do the work in Lombok. And then just see what happens. If it's still nothing opening by the end of the year, we might start heading back with the, with the north monsoon. Heading back east uh, through Sulawesi, back through Indonesia. And then when things open up, we'll go into the Pacific. You know, go through the Solomons again. Maybe head to New Zealand, a place like that. Um, that's sort of a long-term plan right now. As I showed you just now, my mainsail is not looking too good. The patches I put on at the start of the season have not held too well. I mean, they've lasted till now. That's a good five months nearly, four and a half months. And as you've seen in past videos, we had a couple of 50-knot blasts and um, two, like a 48-hour screaming run with never under 35 knots. So it's, it's held. It's done its job, and we're in the easy wind part of the trip now. So regardless, I'm going to have to order a new mainsail, and I have had various quotes, and I have sort of gathered information on what sort of material, and it's a bit, it's quite a big investment, and it's quite a big, you know, you're going to have that sail for probably a good six to ten, seven, eight years, so you don't want to, you know, make a mess of it or just jump right in. So I've done my research now, and I'm pretty, I've narrowed it down, but I'm pretty sure what I'm going to buy. It's always a toss-up between money and, I mean, if money was no object, I'd buy the best material with Dyneema threading and, you know, basically a race sail that's made for cruising. Those sails are nearly three times as much as a good Dacron sail, but they're not going to last three times longer or have three times better shape. So I'm sort of going to do a compromise. I'm going to go for the, the middle range, not the cheap and not the not the really expensive but I'll talk more about that in a in an upcoming episode because I'm gonna walk you through how I have because I'm doing this remotely I'll have to measure the boat for the sail uh, I'll have to really really go through it in depth because if I get a sail sent to Indonesia there's no sail lofts and I want to make sure it's right because if if it comes and it's wrong I don't really have much chance of getting it repaired or getting it reshaped anyway so I'll probably do another another section of a video on that but anyway just to let you know because uh, you patrons and people who are, who are sending money to my PayPal, it's basically you guys buying this sail for me. So you'll be sailing with me uh, once this new sail goes up. So I thought I'd let you know and just keep you up to date with what's happening with the sail. Anyway, things are in the works. Hope you enjoyed this video. And yeah, as I said, thanks so much patrons. There's more and more of you sending money directly to PayPal, which is a, which is a good thing because, I mean, patrons, great, don't get me wrong, but they are getting slightly more greedy as the months go by they're taking 10 percent of all income now which is you know it's your guys money 10 percent of it's not coming directly to me who, who you know who you're trying to support 
it's still great and I still like Patreon, but it's one of those things when the company gets bigger and more staff and more fancier, more more options and all that, their costs go up and I guess their their need for profit goes up. So yeah, sending it directly to PayPal cuts out the middleman as such. But anyway, it's all it's all awesome. I'm super grateful for any any 10 cents that comes away at the moment because we don't have any other income right now. I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. Um, if you've got any tips or you just want to ask some questions, feel free. You can either ask them in the comments or if you go into the about section on my channel, you'll find my email. Feel free to send me an email. I reply to everyone. Send me some questions or tell me I'm doing stuff wrong if you want. And anyway, as I say every week, we'll see you next week. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye bye.